Welcome to Design Patterns. Today we talk about the iterator. The iterator is all about getting the next element out of a collection. Let me give you an example. Tell me who is the next king or queen of Great Britain? Currently we have Elizabeth II, but who is next? Let me give you a hint. There are some very complicated rules about the order who inherits the title of king or queen. Here is one solution to this. So, as we see, Prince Charles is the next one. And afterwards comes Prince William. And then the first son of Prince William, Prince George Alexander Louis. And so on. And then the brother of Prince William comes in line and so on and so forth. So it's quite complicated and it jumps around amongst the heritage tree. And if someone dies, everything changes. Getting the next element out of a data structure isn't that easy. Now let me come to the actual problem of the iterator. How can we access all elements of an arbitrary collection in the same way? There are different kinds of collections as trees, arrays, lists, sets, queues, dictionaries, and so on. Each and every of these data structures has different means how to access elements and some don't even have an order. So sets don't have an order. Dictionaries don't have an order per definition. Accessing them by the index or by some pointer arithmetic is not possible. Every collection has its own way of getting elements, but this is quite cumbersome. We want the same a uniform way how to access all elements. Especially if you want to iterate over the elements, it doesn't make sense to always know how to do this. For example, it doesn't make sense to copy all elements of a set into a list first or into an array and then access all elements in this array. Um, this uniform way of accessing has two functionalities. How to get the next element and are we finished yet? Another thing to reconsider is how we want to define the order maybe from start to end or in reverse order. Or if you're working on a tree, we want to have a depth first or breadth first search. Or we want to simulate a queue and have this first in, last out approach. This should be configurable at runtime. How can we solve this? The idea is just get the next element until a collection is exhausted. What do we need for this? We need an interface which defines the two functionalities. Get me the next item and are we done yet? And in the end, we have to implement such an iterator for every type of collection. So for a tree, for an array and for a list, for example. If you draw it as a diagram, it can look like this. Let me just move out of the way. So we have this iterator interface who defines four methods. First, next is done and current item. So what is the purpose? First, returns the first element of the list. Next, returns the next one. Is done tells me if the list is finished or not. And current item gives me the current item. So it doesn't advance the list, it just gives me the current item. But do we really need all those four methods? The first method we could delete because we just can call next the first time. So when we create an iterator, the current item could already be set to the first item. And that's it. So first we could scratch out. Do we need the is done method? No, we could return in the next if we are done or not. So we can scratch this out. And do we need the current item in the next? Actually, we can combine them. So we could say we immediately return the next item on calling next. And if the list is empty, we return null. So we can scratch current item too. So just next can solve both functionalities. But it's a little bit dangerous. What if we want to store null objects in our list? Hmm, doesn't work. So what next? This is just the interface. We need some concrete implementations for this. 
And here we have the concrete iterator. The concrete iterator is specialized to one type of collection. For example, a list or an array or a tree. In order to get this iterator, we have to implement this create iterator. Of course, there are different variances. But first, let us talk about the consequences. By using iterator, every collection can be accessed in a uniform way. So we have our next, we have our is done method. Furthermore, multiple iterations are possible. We can start multiple iterators and use them. The traversal algorithm can vary. We can use different iterators, for example, a reverse iterator or a normal or every second iterator. And we can decide this at runtime. One problem is that we have lower efficiency. Think of pointer arithmetic on arrays. This is just an addition, which is very fast. By using iterators, we have to create more objects. We have to store where we are now. There are some method calls in between. So the efficiency is lower than just using pointer arithmetics. But we win flexibility and we get a uniform way to access. Then robustness is not guaranteed. Think of deleting an item in a list. What is the next item then? Does the whole list get shorter then? What about one by off errors and so on? What if we insert an element? What should happen then? So the different variants to choose from, either if we should make it more robust or not. For example, we could store if an iterator is active on a list and restrict insertions or deletions. Or we could just go on. So if we insert some elements, we just go on. If we delete elements and we reach the end, then we just stop the iterator. It would also be possible. It hides the underlying data structure. So by accessing all data structures at the same time, we don't know if the underlying data structure is a tree, dictionary, or an array, or a list. This can have performance implications. Now to the known uses. Most programming languages use iterators for looping over collections. The for each loop also uses the iterator implicitly. Of course, there are some performance considerations done, but in the end, every for each loop has to fall back to an implicit iterator. Enumerators and generators are also variants of iterators in different languages. Let's look at the example. So we have a list of integers. Then we create our iterator for that list. And then we loop from the first element, the begin element, until the end element. And we increase the uh, iterator by one step every time. In this case, the plus operator is overwritten and does not increase a counter variable as it normally does, but advances by one element. Whatever this means. In a tree, this could mean something different than in an array. And then we can access the iterator by just dereferencing its element. Here the end is defined by some end serpent, by a watch element, which clearly defines the end. Let's look at a for each loop. Here we have the same array of integers in this case. And we just say for int i in my ints. Internally, it gets translated to the iterator interface and the next method is called all the time. So the, for each loop uses implicit iteration. Python has a different approach. They didn't want to use a serpent. They wanted to use exceptions. And this is how it looks like. Look at the next method. So this is a counter which should count from zero to the limit number. Whenever we are above the limit, we raise and stop iteration exception. How can this be used? Like this. For C in counter, print C. This prints the numbers 0, 1, and 2. But where did the exception go? If you ever program Python, you didn't get that, that every time you use a an, an generator, or every time you use an iterator that an exception is getting thrown. Here, the 
interpreter catches it for you and stops the iteration. So the for loop is stopped whenever the stop iteration exception is thrown. If you call it manually by using the next method, it looks like this. We create the counter, then call next. This returns zero. Then we call next, returns one, next one, two. And if we call it a fourth time, then stop iteration exception is thrown to the console because if you use it this way, nobody catches the exception. Of course, an exception is a very slow variant and a very inefficient variant of implementing this, but that's how they decided to do it. That was the iterator. So the core idea was get the next element until a collection is exhausted. So think of who is next in the royal heritage. Or there is a wonderful quote I found in Alice in Wonderland. Begin at the beginning, the king said very gravely, and go on till you come to the end. Then stop. 